UFOs. In the winter and spring of 1989 and 90, a triangular object with dazzling lights was seen by hundreds of people in the skies over Belgium and Germany. Hovering low above villages and towns, it was reported by civilians, teams of police and military personnel throughout the country. Then on March the 30th, 1990, two NATO radar stations at Semazaki and Glons simultaneously recorded an unidentified object passing south of Brussels. The Belgian Air Force scrambled two F-16s for an intercept. Their radars locked onto the object, the diamond shape, which suddenly drops 1,300 meters in one second. As it dropped below 200 meters, it vanished from all radar screens. The Air Force had no explanation. One scientist suggested the pilots were chasing a rare atmospheric phenomenon, but the chase lasted 75 minutes, the object was seen on no less than five radar screens, and the testimony of hundreds of eyewitnesses remains. UFOs, we bring to them our own expectation of what they might be, what they could mean. Since the beginnings of history, experiences of the UFO have ranged from the sublime to the manifestly absurd. If reports are to be believed, we're already the objects of much curiosity, and every year many hundreds of people claim to have come close to the UFO experience. I mean, that could not be a weather balloon. That's impossible. Well, it's going up and then going over, reappearing. And it's sort of going in a sort of circle, isn't it? I'll tell you what, please, I've got them bloody film. One community that experienced the full force of a UFO flap was at Gulf Breeze in northern Florida. Over those dunes, right there. Over the dunes. Oh, my God. There she is. There she is, right there. Oh, my God. Okay. Kind of way out. There's That boat just went by. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, wouldn't you know it? Property developer Ed Walters videoed that in November 1993, but it was only the most recent of a sequence of events that took the whole community by storm. In 1987, he photographed these extraordinarily detailed UFOs with a simple Polaroid camera. The original Polaroids were extremely dark. This one was allegedly taken as a UFO hovered above a road. And then photo analysts light blasted them which revealed more detail in the emulsion layers. For many, at least, the photos proved that UFOs were here to stay. Others remain unconvinced. But the events put Gulf Breeze firmly on the media map. There are so many hundreds of other witnesses locally and thousands and thousands of other witnesses worldwide that uh, maybe haven't been exposed to the media like I have because maybe they haven't written a book or they haven't for whatever reason. So I don't think that it's a um, uh, Ed Walters story. 
uh, I think that the UFO story stands on its own with thousands of other people standing up and saying, I know what I saw. With a naval base at the seaward end, the vast expanse of water and sky was ideal for the UFO enthusiasts beating a path to Gulf Breeze and nearby Pensacola. What is that baby doing? I don't know, it may look like it's moving around, it doesn't it? I see two of them moving to the west, slowly. Oh, whoa, 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 what's going on up there? There's two of them. Who is that? Look, 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 drop! Look, 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 look! Just drop something out, Gary. Bruce and Ann Morrison now have five hours of video of the strange lights maneuvering above the bay. Look how it moves, Bruce. It's just... Oh, yeah. Well, I was having lunch with a friend at work one day, and she had heard about the Gulf Breeze sightings, but they had not hit the papers in Pensacola. You know, Gulf Breeze is a little smaller community, community outside of Pensacola. And she's started telling me about this man in Gulf Breeze who had taken all these beautiful pictures and there had been articles about it in the Sentinel. And I remember my reaction was so strange because all of a sudden I looked at my arms and I had chill bumps all over me. It was just like, it was an overwhelming feeling of wonder, amazement, and extreme interest. Three minutes, 29 seconds. Turn them right there. There's three of them. Yeah. Let's go away. Whoa, go, baby, go, Bubba. Come on over here and show us some more, Bubba. I can tell you right now, I, I have been out with people that would go bananas when they saw an airplane. In fact, there's a man that uh, comes out occasionally with our group that every airplane that flies over to him is a UFO, and he will get mad and irate if you look at him and say, that's an airplane. I mean, it can be a 727, 5,000 feet over your head, coming into the landing pattern at the Pensacola Airport. This guy will look up at it and say, that's a UFO. And that's his right. But I know what I saw. I know what's on my phone. And if you want to believe it, fine. If you don't want to believe it, that's fine also. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Oh, it's kind of green. It's got a green halo around it, doesn't it? Did y'all see green around it? Yeah. All right. Not surprisingly, Ed's photograph seemed too good to be true, and he soon found himself attacked by the debunkers. Well, it's really kind of shocking. I'm an average fella. I build houses. I'm a, I'm a working man, and for some, to see something so extraordinary and tell about it, and then to be blasted, it's shocking. Uh, you just don't expect that kind of reaction. You expect people to say, oh my gosh, rather than, oh, you're crazy. Over the dunes. Oh my gosh. There she is. There she is, right there. Oh my god. I would like for somebody in the um, military industrial complex, for the world governments, I would like for somebody to come forward and say, don't worry, here's what it is, this is the answer, sleep well. But they don't do that. I think they don't know. I think that they're struggling just like we're struggling. I think that when there is a, 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 a flap, a UFO uh, flap, then I think that the military and the governments of the world are paying attention behind, this, behind the scenes. The love-hate relationship between governments and UFOs was realized in the United States Air Force's Project Blue Book, set up to investigate cases like these during the 1950s and 60s. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory claimed that this is a light aircraft, but Lee Hansen, the photographer, is adamant that it was nothing of the sort. As James Waters drove through Monument Valley, a bright object sped past, followed by another a second later. Slowed down, the object seems to contract and expand. 
official explanation, a meteorite. But two, one after the other? Two other classic UFO films were singled out for study by Project Blue Book. This filmed near Great Falls, Montana, and this in the skies above Utah. Alan Hynek, an astrophysicist, was brought in as a specialist consultant to the team. Initially skeptical, his attitude changed when these two films were analyzed. The Utah film had already been subjected to some thousand or so man hours of analysis by the Navy's Photographic Interpretation Laboratory. So the panel uh, got up in their chairs and crouched around the wall to examine the films, and they asked to have the films run several times, as a matter of fact. Now, the Navy had, on the basis of their detailed analysis of the Utah films, they had concluded that the objects shown in the films could not be birds, balloons, aircraft, and so forth, but indeed that they were self-luminous, unidentified objects. Despite this conclusion, the panel rejected it and concluded that the objects were birds. They couldn't be unidentified, therefore they had to be birds. I came away from the meeting and from the room with the distinct feeling, however, that the panel had deliberately moved to debunk the whole subject and not to give it the serious scientific attention which it deserved. In the skies above Britain, a UFO appears from nowhere and flies alongside Concorde. It seemed intelligently controlled, but cameras can lie. The flights were filmed with a specially designed periscope camera system, the Astrovision, which uses a complex arrangement of lenses and prisms. We asked Alan Tanner of the original British Airways film team to take a closer look. Now this is probably the classic UFO shot that everybody refers to when they talk about UFOs and Concorde. Again, you will find that it looks very similar to other shots that we've got uh, with funny little marks on it that people say, was this a UFO or wasn't it? Look at it closely and you'll find that there's that little spot of light coming there which could be quite easily mistaken for a UFO, but in fact it's quite possible that the sun which was off to the left-hand side, had caught the front element of the Astrovision periscope system and would have caused an internal reflection. And I feel that that is really sums it all up. You will see that as the camera moves, so that little spot moves. And I don't think that's a UFO. Above the Norfolk Broads, three fishermen film a diamond-shaped UFO. Checks were run on aircraft and weather balloons, but the skies were to all intents and purposes completely clear. Three months earlier, besides the Black Sea, a tourist videoed this. It seemed an extraordinary coincidence. Until we met Simon Nash of Panasonic. This is a, a basic iris motor. The principle of the iris motor is to regulate the amount of light entering the camera. The iris motor will open on very dull scenes and poorly illuminated scenes and close down on very high intensity or brightly lit scenes. We actually have no idea what this sort of object is here in the sky. It could be reflection from a plane or, or some other light source. But as the camera starts to zoom in, you can clearly see here the shape of the actual iris elements within the lens section of the camera. It appears to be caused by a reflection of light entering the front of the camera and bouncing around between the lens elements. And of course, sandwiched between the lens elements is of course the iris motor. And the iris motor takes on this characteristic shape that it is often seen when you're looking directly or, or indirectly in towards the sun. But the image at the beginning of the tape is quite unusual and is something that can't be explained by normal camera technology, if you like. 
Over the past 30 years, some 8,000 UFO sightings have been reported to a special department at the British Ministry of Defence. About 5% or 400 of these remain unidentified. Nick Pope is the man from the ministry. The thing to stress is that 95%, I would say, of the reports that we get can be very easily explained. There is probably a hard core of about 5% which appear to defy explanation and of course we keep an open mind on them. But having said that, it doesn't mean that because something appears to defy explanation that in fact it, it couldn't be explained the very next day. Recently we've had an airship operating over the UK and that's been brightly illuminated from the inside. Now when you see it from close up, it's very obviously an airship. When you see it from a long distance away, it just looks like a very bright, cigar-shaped object. And, of course, that has generated an awful lot of UFO reports. Many reports continue to defy rational explanation. In a valley near Ottawa, the object on the right was apparently witnessed by more than a dozen people. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police said it was in fact a Sikorsky helicopter. But the Canadian Defence Department said there were no helicopters in the area. This curious object filmed above an English cornfield remains a mystery. The tractor driver in the distance said that he saw a small silver disc fly silently over him at speed. Whatever that is, that's moving on its own. As a TV cameraman was setting up for a weather picture in Wisconsin, an object flashed past the windmill. It's travelling at over a thousand miles an hour. He checked with a local airbase and with a NORAD defence network but they had nothing to report. In Oxfordshire, while filming a farming program, a TV crew suddenly noticed this object over the fields. Well, first of all, we saw what appeared to be a very large vapour trail much thicker than the normal vapour trails and um, when this vapour trail finished it stopped at a straight line you know, as opposed to fading out. Um, the object which was obviously circular and an orange yellow colour seemed to stop very slowly and then very quickly out of frame and it went so quickly just couldn't follow it. it seemed to be an amazing speed it really was. Well, first of all it was the vapour trail which seemed to be suddenly appear. Um, the line in the sky before the vapour trail actually appeared was also visible, so it looked as though it must have passed overhead without us noticing it at all. But then the vapour trail itself was, um, may I say, sort of curly, as, as though the object that was leaving it was in fact spinning. Then looking at the object itself, you could see with the naked eye that it was in fact spinning and orange and round. Over three and a half thousand UFO reports worldwide have come from civilian and military pilots, people like Colonel Fletcher Prouty, who commanded an air squadron based in Tokyo in the 1950s. He was one of the five founders of the massive NORAD defense network. My aircraft were in the sky over half the world, regularly, all the time. And one day I got a top secret uh, memorandum delivered from the White House, from the uh, headquarters of the Air Force. And it ordered me, and it ordered me to tell my crews that if ever they saw an object that was unidentified, they were to report it to me. I was to set them down and take their depositions, sworn statements, and then mail them to a certain office in the Pentagon. And one day, one of my crews on a flight from Honolulu to Tokyo saw something that they had to report. And they walked in my office that morning, and the, uh, the captain of the crew was an old acquaintance of mine. 
he said, Colonel, I'm uh, really a little embarrassed today. He said, because we're going to get involved in a lot of paperwork. He said, we saw an unidentified object flying beside our aircraft for over an hour last night between Midway and Tokyo. We had 60 passengers aboard. There's no way we can say that it wasn't seen and it wasn't there. So I had 12 men in the crew. I had to set aside 12 rooms with 12 interrogators. We had them write their stories down what they saw. I packaged that all up and sent it to the headquarters Air Force. Never heard another word from it. In America, secrecy remains the order of the day, partly a legacy of the Cold War and new weapons development. But in Russia, things seem to be changing. We were given unique access to leading military figures in the former Soviet Union, who not only came forward with their own testimony, but discussed research projects linked to UFO incidents. Now, hundreds are reported every month to UFO groups and the military authorities. As a Russian film crew were making a music video, watching crowds saw this object appear over the center of Tbilisi. In Moscow, a KGB officer and his family film a group of unidentified lights. Until very recently, people never dared report UFOs, let alone release pictures like these.